Then, as we head a little further inland, over the wetlands, the terrain begins to change and we come to the high country. Getting to these places is a challenge in itself. Because of the incredibly strong prevailing southeast trade winds, our chopper was literally being blown around the sky. This is the Alton Mui Range, where the Starkey area reveals another of its intimate secrets. We're about 2,000 feet, roughly 600 metres above sea level, in an area of low grassland. It's an area of constant prevailing winds and high rainfall, as we've discovered. The vegetation battles for survival. The trees all bend with the prevailing wind, and many of them grow in bonsai form. The whole place has been shaped by time and the wind. The diversity of this landscape makes this wilderness so special. Here we have islands of life created by nature. Nurtured by the correct weather conditions, themselves a mix of meteorological phenomena and preserved by their isolation. As Peter Stanton explains, this rugged landscape is very special. That high peak of the Alton Mui Range where we landed is a superb example of the scenery of the Starkey area. You have these beautiful mesas or plateau and isolated mountains. And they're all islands in a spatial sense. They're sitting in the coastal plain, distant from each other. And because they're also islands in time, they've evolved differently. You have communities on each of these peaks which are different from the communities on a peak nearby. And they've developed their own, own little islands of, of weather. So much of the scientific interest of the Starkey area resides in these isolated mountains. In one way, you could call the Starkey region a natural ark, plant and animal species. And we'll be examining some of the more unusual of those soon. But it's the geographical nature of the place that stuns the eye and makes the mind wonder at the processes which can create such odd, spectacular and sometimes eerie scapes.
hidden away on the Starkey, almost inaccessible little glades, whole ecosystems far away from humanity. The waterfall on its own is not all that spectacular, but here it's coupled with this vast overhanging rock ledge, its walls and roof alive with colours and thousands of bats. There aren't too many people who've ever seen this. Other than coming in by helicopter, the only access is by a minimum of a four-day hike across the mountains from the nearest four-wheel drive track. What a magic place. And being one of the few people ever to see it gave a tremendous feeling of privilege. But there's much more to be found, a land of plants and forests. What human landscape architect could, for example, create such a wonder as this palm forest? Palms have caused a lot of news about this place in recent times, especially this, the now infamous foxtail palm. It's a protected species and highly prized because of the value of its seeds on the black market. It was unknown to science about 12 or 13 years ago. And because palms do excite a lot of interest, the discovery of a whole new genus of palms that means that there are no other palms very closely related to it. It's the only member of that classification, that genus. <laughs> Excited a lot of interest around the world. And it put a lot of pressure on the palm because the only place in the whole world where it grows is in the Cape Melville National Park. One of the tasks of the administrators of this new national park will be to ensure these plants and the other natural wonders of the area are not illegally exploited. It'll be a demanding job because once again, isolation in the wilderness favours those who would steal our natural heritage. It's amazing to see groves of these graceful palms growing on what looks like bare rock. Their roots are actually set in the deep soil between. But in some places, again a testament to just how varied this place is. A bare rock and palms give way to what the north has come to be perhaps most identified with. Dense, lush rainforest sprouting from the valleys protected by the escarpments. Once again, a series of isolated communities of enormous scientific significance, isolated from each other, and yet flourishing, a mystery, sure, but one which will provide many valuable answers as it's investigated. Studying these and other forests helps us to understand just how our planet works. 
Winding like giant serpents across the floor of the rainforest, the buttress roots of this magnificent specimen of a Cape York fig tree, almost certainly hundreds of years old. It's finding treasures like this that really underlines the diversity of this magnificent area. And that's probably its most striking feature. The scientific value of the plant life here has astounded people like Peter Stanton, who, on our trip, was finding new species and specimens he'd not seen despite years of research in the area. He knows it backwards, but still, it surprises him. This tree before had only been known from a very small patch of forest near the McElroy's Range, a couple of hundred kilometres to the north. There's a very large area of rainforest there and it was part of it. And here we are in the middle of this dry belt, assumed of no botanical interest. Miles from here, this total area of forest here is it's probably only about 40 or 50 hectares. Yet this species of tree is that one only known from the McElroy's range before. Peter, the, the bark on this tree is what attracted me. That is just beautiful. What is it? Well, it's just one more indication of the magic of this site to a botanist, Frank. <laughs> this is... Uh, a species new to science. I didn't know it was in this particular patch of forest, but it had been picked up nearby here 12 months or so ago. It has a generic name, but it has, it's, it's a new species. Here, at the head of the Howick River, a vivid example of how the diversity of the area is in large part dictated by soil types. For miles and miles, growing out of the white sand is open eucalypt woodland. Fairly unspectacular, but then suddenly it changes and it's very noticeable the soil becomes a different color its texture changes and this alteration heralds a transformation in the vegetation type some of these trees here exhibit fascinating and often peculiar characteristics take this giant palm as a good example of the eccentricity it takes about 50 years to grow all the while building up a massive supply of seeds right at its head. And it spends all those decades of growth preparing for just one event, a truly spectacular reproductive effort. Then, after 50 years, in response to some unknown signal, either bred into the species or some natural or seasonal trigger, in an orgy of flowering and fruiting, the plant uses all its energy and then dies. Here in one little patch, we were lucky enough to find several examples of this palm, all at different stages of the, as I said, somewhat eccentric life. But these unique and beautiful plant populations don't make up the sum total of the scientific value of the Starkey region. Living in amongst and under these protective umbrellas is an extraordinary diversity of animal life. All this colony of bats is one of the reasons why, in terms of our nation's living history, this is another of the very special places. Once again, the secret here is the isolation with pockets of unique habitat dotted throughout this massive new park. They contain animal and bird life that has survived through the ages, often in circumstances that have the biologists scratching their heads. Like these bats, sometimes they just should not be there, but they are, and that's another of the wonders of Starkey. One would expect that there'd be other features of the environment that would be unique in such an area. I guess once you start to look at the fauna, and this has only happened in a very superficial way in the Cape Melville area, we've discovered a new species of frog. And where it was found was in amongst the stands of Wajetia, where they grow alongside a stream. I'm sure that if we put a lot more effort into researching these, these peaks, and particularly the Melville Range itself, uh, we would find other things that were, were unique to the area.
This is a bird watcher's wonderland. From the wetlands to the rainforests, the calls ring out of a myriad of species. And once again, according to scientific theory, there are some birds here that simply shouldn't be. There's much to learn from the animal inhabitants of this region. Lessons waiting in a natural classroom, where yet again, the quirk of nature provides scientists with a unique opportunity. Closer to the ground, though, we find the animals we always associate with the Australian bush. The small mammals, graceful, beautiful, and in some cases rare. <laughs> 